What are they doing in the Dexter house with their flypaper fancies? Struck in the buzzing mind of three days without sleep, waiting to go to the courts to face the judge to be betrayed again. Who are you who will look into their eyes and call them ghosts of the tenements that the city sleeps to wipe clean when extinction comes on the wings of the, of the seasons which bury us under? Will those who come after, uh, come after recognize your remains from theirs with currency rotting in the human groin, buried under the concrete which is void of any past, or struck in a room smaller than the inside of uh, Joe Frazier's swollen nose. Their passing is the extinction of the city, where even the hangers-on could no longer afford a room at the Chelsea, where Japanese tourists come to see a city bleached of history. Who among you have learned the art of losing well, to overcome the tension that splits the mind in two, and two and the newborn skin of heaven and hell falls from view on 86th Street, but never underestimate the lightning of their minds that give, <clears throat> excuse me, that give to their young revolutionary hearts that overcome the buzzing fear that they are the new Indians in their broken bath, broken down bathrooms, where even the shock to their senses will not wipe clean, uh, excuse me, where even the shock to the, uh, the senses will not wipe them clean from their rooms. Twisted abbots sit alone with gangrene in their leg, but they will not be digested into the rotted gut of the city to be shit out on the streets like another band of American refugees or vanish into the final frame that festers in the sewers where the other half have left their footprints. If management survives, then something much greater has died. This is actually a piece that I started writing when I first started adopting the style of writing. It's called uh, Coney Island's Last Stand. No tickets were ever taken here at the end of the queue line where prostitutes split in two from the pressure of choosing a new way to lose. All rides keep you going in circles or heading upwards until you hit your peak and head down, uh, then head straight down, past the turnstile into the concrete heart of the animal of consumption, where bloodied fingers beat against bleached walls, void of graffiti or a past which is not New York but is New York whose architects know nothing of the garbage heaps or the pauper's grave. Here, both are the same for the human wreckage. The sideshow fancies are swallowed into the brown snow soul of the East Coast and melts into carnival's last gleaming. The new Indians stand against the oncoming tide that comes to wash them out of shared bathrooms like the aborted flow of ghosts of the SROs or the saints of the Dexter House that learn the art of night diving onto the reservation of Queens or washed into the waters of the Hudson down onto the shores of Coney Island among the tapestries of newspapers, use condoms, syringes, right into the eye of the storm of human waste to be buried in the last lights of the People's Park. And this last piece is actually a dedication to a friend of mine who succumbed to one last act of desperation. It's actually entitled. I want to lay my head across your chest to hear your heart beat, to know you're still alive, but your chest and its heart are now gray ash, dry as ancient bedrock, where oceans of tears once flowed under the light of the lamp that sat on your nightstand and the flicker and the flicker of the television set. You are never gonna live behind the heavy metal door. Did I say live? There is no life in the wards, only the cold and pale skin of existing. You're never again going to stumble in that blue gown with the tag around your wrist. 
Did the Christ born of the needle's prick grow impotent to no longer answer your prayers which came in like radio static before the sedative hit its mark which cast you into the dreams of someone who finds a natural home in the states of emergency. Your voice should have been a radio. Then you should have, oh, then you could have turned to the right station and found the rock and roll of the heart. I like to put the, uh, the moisture back into the earth that was your body, not with water, but with coffee. Black, of course. Any source of life should be uncut by milk or water and perhaps the serrated edges of your words will no longer be dulled. Bitterness does become a swollen gland if left untreated. That is why I'm writing you this letter at 4.45 a.m. after a night of no sleep, after a long string of insomniac nights, to let you know that pills could have plugged the broken dam that carried you away only to flow into the winter where the muted and blind snow weeps silently now that you're gone. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew.